Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. I'm just sitting here drinking my morning coffee. You guys, watch down below for uh, like the fake sip monitor guy. He uh, comes in and he will count and put timestamps for every time I sip and let you guys know whether it's a fake sip or a real sip. Uh, but yeah, drinking my morning coffee, getting ready to start my day, get some squatting and benching going here soon. And uh, I came across something just in my social media feed, and it was on Alan Aragon's wall. Who you guys know? I'm a fan of. I like Alan. I've known Alan for many, many years. And it was a debate and a discussion going on, and I guess it's over on Price Plow's channel. I'll try to link the video down below if I remember to put it in. And it's an entire debate discussing how many calories are actually in branched chain amino acids. Now, this is insanely ludicrous. This is ludicrous to even discuss. Now, we could argue, okay, all information has scientific merit, right? You know, scientifically, this has merit. Maybe someone who's working on their PhD in nutritional science, this might be uh, something they would study as a minor minutia for part of their, their doctoral work. But you guys know what? This actually has zero applications in the real world. This has zero applications in the real world because honestly, as far as tracking calories go, uh, consistency is what matters. And this kind of shows you guys how ludicrous the entire supplement world gets. How ludicrous it gets when we're at the point where people need to debate the amount of calories, of so an insignificant amount of calories in a product that is probably not capable of changing tissue weight even if you were to dramatically change your caloric intake based on it. People say, what do you mean? How many calories you consume matters. It does, but in this case, it doesn't. It absolutely doesn't matter. And here's why. Let's assume that something like branched chain amino acids, which do nothing, they're an absolutely worthless product. This is why this gets ludicrous. Uh, branched chain amino acids have been found based upon the, the meta-analysis in the last year or two to have zero positive impacts on muscle protein synthesis, muscle growth, any of that. All right, They don't actually help you as a isolated supplement form. They only do anything when it's part of a larger protein. In other words, when you just add branched chain amino acids, extra ones to your existing diet, and just take those in isolation without a full amino acid complex together, it doesn't have any, any benefits. It doesn't have any benefits at all as far as your muscle gains, your growth, or recovery, any of that. It doesn't help. So let that sink in. We're, we're actually discussing, and the community debates this. There have been entire big forum posts all online about this. And this, again, shows how crazy people are who take supplements. Uh, the, 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 most of them are completely useless. But to this one, we know it is. And it was hyped up by everybody, all these experts, because of some, some preliminary research. You know, thanks, Dr. Elaine Norton. Uh, some preliminary research, again, all caused by Cybation and everyone else who are interested in pimping this product later. So them and other companies were involved. Lobliner admits he was part of it. That it got hyped up, and now that the data's come out, you're seeing almost no one supporting it who's really an expert in the field of nutrition. They've all backed on said, oh, the data doesn't even show this helps. And some of them feel foolish for having supported it. So we're talking about a useless product here. But here's where it gets interesting. Uh, it's technically amino acids. We're falling back under the category of protein. Falling under the category of protein, what happens when you protein overfeed? In other words, when it's been studied in humans where you take people on maintenance in a control group and have other people stay on the same monitored diet and add 500 calories of protein in. Anyone know what happens? Almost nothing. Protein itself, due to the thermic effect, the way the body utilizes it, everything else, if you add a bunch of protein to your diet and you're at maintenance and you don't add any carbs or fat anywhere, the changes in tissue weight in your body are negligible, right? They're there, but it's not like adding other calories. In other words, no, you don't see a big jump in muscle growth. You don't see a jump in body fat. You might see a small change in the amount of muscle or slight amount of recomposition occur. But even when it's drawn out over a month or two, you're talking about less than a pound of body weight change, right? That's what happens as a result of protein overfeeding. Uh, this is almost to the point to where we could argue for weight gain or weight loss. This is studies I want to see later when we start talking about macros is that probably your protein calories in general should be de-emphasized. They're there during weight loss really only to preserve muscle. Uh, but as far as even, even fuel sources and stuff go, 
they almost, when you look at data like that, you almost have to conclude that protein itself almost has <clears throat> a negligible effect to your uh, maintenance calories. It has almost no effect because you're generally burning carbs and fat for fuel sources, right? For, for all your metabolic functions, everything else. And the protein seems to contribute to such a small amount uh, because even breaking protein down ends up having its own thermic effect. Converting it to other things has a thermic effect. You actually use it for anything. Uh, so it doesn't have as meaningful of a contribution to your overall calories for weight gain or even weight preservation. So you're taking something like branched chain amino acids, which protein seems to matter the least as far as calories go for changes in body weight, and you're going to count the exact amount of calories in it, even though it has no muscle sparing or muscle growth properties either, because it's not even as effective as just normal protein, right? In other words, adding a, a scoop of protein powder by the chicken breast that has 10 or 15 grams of protein in it is actually going to contribute more to your muscle growth and even retaining lean body mass than branched chain amino acids do on a gram for gram basis. So we're, we're, we're talking about something that's negligible here, right? Well, how much are people taking of this? What, five grams is a standard serving of these supplements? So assuming it's zero calories, okay, it has no impact. But even if it has more calories than normal protein per gram, you know, again, because of the thermic effect not there to maybe break it down into the amino acids. Let's say it goes up to five instead of four, right? Because that four is a net. That's not the gross calories from, from protein, by the way. A lot of people don't know that. That's already calculated into the calorie intake that some of the thermic effect is already uh, attributed. But that's getting too complex for people. All right, let's assume it's five. That's 25 calories. So if you take two or three servings a day, which is getting ludicrous, you're talking about somewhere between zero and 75 calories a day. So that's pretty extreme. If you're taking three servings of this stuff every day, on the most extreme end, it might be adding 75 calories of the calorie source that has the least impact on, on changes in body weight. You guys see how ludicrous this becomes at this point? Now, people will say, but Jason, 75 calories could matter. They'll bust out their calculator, right? They'll try to assume, well, 75 calories. Uh, let me get my calculator here. Well, if we extrapolate that out, 3,500 is needed for a pound of body weight. That could, once every 47 days, that might impact your body weight a whole pound. No, it won't. No, it won't. Why? You can't measure your calories within 75. All of these people out here who are tracking calories, and guys, don't get me wrong, calories matter. I want to put that up there up front. Calories absolutely matter for changes in tissue weight. If you're in a calorie surplus, you'll gain weight. You'll gain tissue weight of some type, combination of muscle, fat, whatever. If you're in a calorie deficit, you will lose tissue weight in some combination of fat or muscle, right? No one debates that who knows what they're talking about based upon the scientific literature. That's not a point of contention. Calories matter. You can't track your daily calories within 75. People say, well, I have a digital scale. I can track my macros and my calories down to less than 1%. No, you can't. Because if you take a digital scale and you take dry rice, let's say you make it really easy on yourself. You eat three foods. Let's say you eat nothing but chicken breast, brown rice, and broccoli, right? The bro, the bro diet. And you're weighing all of it on a scale. You, you do know that it's not accurate enough to tell you anything. And here's why the moisture changes. In other words, a digital scale, let's say you weigh out your brown rice. In fact, the cup is probably a more accurate measurement of your brown rice. The actual cup where you can level it off is probably a closer measurement than your scale because the brown rice in the cup probably won't expand as much based upon moisture and humidity. Yeah. It won't expand as much as the volume in terms of the weight. So actually, the dry scoop is a more accurate <laughs> measurement by a, by a small margin. But you weigh it out on your digital scale, and let's say you're consuming 2,000 calories worth of brown rice every day, according to your perfect digital scale. All right, that's only plus or minus 10%. The digital scale, because of differences in moisture soaked into the rice, actually the water in it weighs more than the brown rice does. So how humid it has been the last three days or the container that it's been stored in will impact the amount of calories more uh, 
than you can accurately measure. It will be up to 10% off. So your 2,000 calories is actually somewhere between 1,800 and 22. Now that's just for your brown rice. You guys see the problem? You're already over double the margin of that 75. Then what happens, you start weighing the chicken. You realize your chicken changes weight even when it's wet in the package. Your raw chicken loses weight every single day that it sits in the package. So how many days was it since that chicken was butchered? Three days, five days, seven days, you know, every one of those days that it loses a few percentages of weight. So even if you weigh it before you cook it, the moisture content goes down. Well, if it's losing water weight, it's gaining calories per gram on the scale because it's becoming more calorically dense. And then once you cook it, all that moisture and stuff comes out and it loses a lot more weight. But even then, how long you cook it affects the scale weight, but it doesn't affect the calories. You see the problem here? Your, your digital scale measures your food within 10% accuracy. So your 3,000 calorie a day chicken, brown rice, and broccoli diet that you're measuring perfectly is somewhere between 2,700 and 3,300, depending upon how humid it is, how old the chicken is, everything else. All right. Uh, that 75 calories of you knowing whether that 75 is somewhere between zero or 75, which, it, you know, because it's going to be somewhere in between that spectrum, isn't significant. It's not going to make one bit of difference. Yet people want to sit around and debate this stuff. I mean, entire debates happen over the calories in branched chain amino acids, a supplement that does nothing except drain your wallet of determining how many calories are in it when there's no way you can even consume enough of it for it to impact your changes in, in tissue weight in your body to any measurable quantity. Guys, this is majoring in the minors. This is worrying about stuff that doesn't matter. This is worrying about stuff that doesn't matter. But the whole supplement world would have you guys believe this is an important topic. Because if people are going to discuss it in forums, if they're going to make videos about it, it must matter, right? So supplements themselves must matter. They really don't. They really don't, guys. It's just absolutely ludicrous that people are worrying about stuff like this. All right, guys. But that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.